everybody. Morning. Steve Mathis coming at you this morning from Grand Teton National Park. I'm out early. I've actually been out here for quite a while and the sun's still, I don't know, 15 minutes away from actually hitting the top of the Grand Teton, which is right over there. It's beautiful. And the full moon. It's a very pretty scene. I'm going to do a quick video this morning about photographing elk here in the Tetons. So I'll give you a, a few kind of tips and hints that'll help you if you're coming out here. And uh, even if you're photographing elk somewhere else, it might help you, maybe not. Tip number one, get out here early. So I'm usually, when I'm coming out to photograph elk, I'm usually leaving my house an hour and a half before sunrise. So I just look up, you know, wherever, it's on my watch, just what time sunrise is every day. And I need to leave the house about an hour and a half before that. So I like to be up in the spot where I'm gonna be looking for elk about 45 minutes before sunrise. That seems to be a pretty good time to uh, get you here early enough that you can um, find the elk before they disappear into the timber for the day, but also late enough that there's just starting to be enough light that you can actually see those elk as you're out here. As you can see, I'm in my vehicle and I do a lot of photography from my vehicle. I use the car as a blind to uh, help keep the elk from thinking I'm a hunter trying to kill them. Just makes them a little more comfortable. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But uh, back to the topic of getting here early. So elk here, typically, there are of course exceptions to every rule, but typically the elk here will be out in the meadows until the sun hits them, or even, you know, when that's getting close, and then they're gonna disappear for the nearest patch of dark timber they can find. So you have a pretty narrow window of opportunity with elk out here uh, between kind of that 30 minutes before sunrise until, you know, sunrise or a half hour after sunrise. So you've kind of got an hour-ish or so that's typically gonna be what works for you out here. So that said, know that you're gonna be photographing in low light. So equipment matters in low light, end of discussion. I mean, if they're in photography, there's tons of discussion about does equipment really matter? And in some of those cases, I'd say, no, it doesn't really. The photographer matters definitely way more, but in shooting in low light out here, equipment matters. So what that means is you're gonna to want to bring your fastest lenses possible. Uh, in this case, this morning, I have a D850 with a 70 to 200 f2.8 on it. And then sitting right next to it, I've got another D850 with my 600 f4. Uh, any anything above an f4 out here is going to be even more you know sketchy on if it can work well for you out here anything's possible but stack the odds in your favor use your your lenses that are the fastest lenses you've got out here uh, don't be afraid to shoot at high isos you're going to be absolutely needing some high isos out here in the darkness so don't be afraid to crank those up if you're a pixel peeper and you hate having noise in your images, this probably isn't a subject that will suit you very well. So crank them up. I mean, depending on what your camera is, you know, crank it ISO 12,000, 25,000. Um, I'll go to ISO 6400 on my D850s and uh, I can still make the images look really nice. I might have to do a little post-processing to get the noise reduced, and I might not be able to print them six feet wide and have them still look good. But that's cool. It's either do that or stay at home. Full-frame sensors also have an advantage out here with uh, their noise performance. So a 24 or a 20 megapixel full-frame sensor is going to give you better, typically, high ISO performance than a crop sensor or a high megapixel sensor like the D850. So bring your bring your full frame sensors uh, and uh, come out here and have a ball. Of course, crop sensors can work, just not quite as well. There's a little advantage out here. 
to doing that. So I'm not seeing any elk at the moment out here, but I'm going to get back on the highway and move around, and I'll be back to you with some more tips. Oh, tip number whatever, doesn't matter. Bring some coffee uh, and a snack. I've got a banana here and a coffee, and that's my breakfast, and I love it. Uh, listen to a nice audiobook on your drive up. This morning I've been listening to a book called The Wave, and it's fantastic, highly recommended. So I listen to audiobooks all the time when I'm driving back and forth into the Tetons from my house and driving around looking for critters to photograph. So Audible, I have a link in the description to uh, try Audible for free. You can get that book, The Wave, for free. Uh, or any other book on Audible, if you use that link. So go check that out. And uh, I'm gonna turn that book back on and go look for some elk to actually photograph this morning. But there's part one of some tips and tricks to photograph elk here in the Tetons. I'll check back in with you in a minute. All right, more tips. So how do you find the elk out here? Uh, you got to go look for them. Never know where they're going to be, but a good starting point, a great starting point, is all the way on just anywhere along the Teton Park Road, which we call the Inner Loop. Uh, so anywhere from the entrance gate at Moose, all the way along the road up until Jackson Lake Junction. And anywhere along there you're going to find elk, and you got to be here at the right time of the year of course, which typically is first week of September until through mid-October. That's going to give you your best chance for success and seeing some of the rut action and the big bulls herding up their harems. And uh, you're going to find little pockets of them all along the road here. So every day is different, of course, and the, the elk are going to be in a different spot every day. But however long that road is, maybe a 15 mile stretch of road. It's a great place to just go travel along that road and look for the elk. So once you get up here and you find some elk, that's when you're gonna start using your full frame sensor and your fast lens. Don't be afraid to go slow shutter speed. So I'll shoot off of a nice solid platform here, a bean bag. All right, I'm back on the road, sorry. I had to leave that spot. because I got sick of being there. And I wanted to keep driving and hopefully find something this morning while I'm making this video because I haven't been seeing much at the moment. Uh, anyway, what I was saying about shooting off that bean bag out of the window, there's the, the big advantage, well, off the bean bag is a nice solid platform, right? So you can shoot with some really slow shutter speeds there. So in the darkness like that, at high ISO, a slow shutter speed can help you keep that ISO down. Um, obviously the movement in the elk you either need to pan with that elk to minimize the blur of the elk and that'll streak out the background which can be great um, or you're just going to kind of have a low percentage of hits but I can sometimes shoot off this bean bag and photograph elk at like a 15th of a second a 20th of a second and still get nice sharp images so it's going to be a low keeper rate but it can happen but even getting down to a 60th of a second with a 600 millimeter lens, some people freak out and say you can't do that or it doesn't work or whatever, and I can tell you it absolutely does work. Uh, so just go ahead and get on a nice solid platform, turn your VR on, and fire away. You don't need a 600th of a second out here, your ISO is going to be through the roof. So don't be afraid of high ISOs and slow shutter speeds out here. Um, just know that you're going, it's a low percentage game, right? You're going to have some images that are blurry and some images that aren't. But I'd rather be out here getting, you know, a 50% keeper rate than not shooting at all. So that's my attitude on that. Also shooting from the car, using it as a blind. This happens all the time out here where if people are shooting from their car and there's an elk out there doing his thing and you're getting some great shots and then some other cars will pull up and the people will, you know, pile out of their cars and... Uh, start taking photos or whatever they're moving around that scares the bejesus out of those elk and they're gone 
So, you know, it's sometimes getting out of your car can work, but more often than not, when you get out of your car, those elk are become really afraid of you and they're out of there and that's gonna be the end of your session. So while it's possible, certainly if you're a hunter and you know how to approach elk and you have the proper gear and the proper cover, uh, you can you can absolutely do it that way. But out here on this Teton Park Road, it works way better to just stay in your car. And then if you have to get out, like if you wanna get lower, you know, you, you kinda of gotta be stealthy about it. Just you know, when the elk isn't watching, pop that door open and crouch down right next to your car. And then when he looks over, don't, you know, stop moving, let him get comfortable again, kind of a thing. So it's, it's real important. And then, you know, you don't want to be that person either out here who's the one that pops out of their car and opens their trunk and gets set up, you know, starts setting up their tripod and everything. Well, then that spooks the elk and then they're gone. And then everybody else loses out on that opportunity as well. So it is important to be aware of how your behavior is affecting the elk, but also how your behavior is affecting the elk for the other photographers and people there that are watching and listening to the bugling and that kind of stuff. Uh, make sure you get, when you pull off on the side of the road, get all four tires across the white line, you know, blocking the highway. You know, it's illegal obviously, but it's, uh, it's just rude. So don't block the highway, get all the way off the road and uh, let the other people, you know, who aren't there to watch elk go cruising on by. And uh, that's the right thing to do there as well. So back with more tips. I'm about to get blasted in the face with the sun. Yep, there it was. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. So where was I? I lost my train of thought, as usual. So once you find the elk, let's just go there. Let's assume you found the elk now. You're on the Teton Park Road. You've pulled off the road. You're in your vehicle with your beanbag set up. Now, what are you looking for out here? Of course, you want the, the biggest bull you can find, right? Everybody wants that trophy bull, uh, and that's great. So if you found that bull, now you gotta start to look for, like just a picture of that bull in the sagebrush is probably pretty cool. Uh, once you get that shot, start looking for the stuff that's even more interesting. And there's a lot of that out here. So it totally depends on the day and the weather and the conditions and where that animal is, but uh, there's there's almost always something you can do to make the image more interesting, and you know that can include silhouetting it with the sun rising right behind him. Um, look for fog, uh, look for clouds, look for potential to shoot it wide with uh, you know a magnificent sunrise sky, or if the elk are in the proper position, you can shoot it wide with the Tetons right behind them. Um, look for that pose when the elk is bugling and he's got his head back and those antlers are really back. Uh, pay really close attention to the posture of the elk uh, with their leg position. You know, you want to see all four legs and that weird straight-legged kind of awkward look is a no-go. So shoot a burst when they're walking and look for that really perfect leg position. Um, look for an interesting environment. Look for interesting light. Uh, the weather can be awesome. I love being out here in the snow and the fog and the mist and all that stuff can just add extra layers of interest to the photo uh, to tag onto that really cool animal. So just kind of, you know, it's exciting. You get out here and you find that big bull, make a few photos of it and be psyched and then start to go, okay, I've got some photos of this big bull. Now, how can I take it another step further? And that kind of applies to every subject, but certainly with with these elk out here, you're out here at the right time of day, at the right time of year for really interesting weather and interesting scenes. You know, even just changing your background a little bit can make such a huge difference to, you know, for instance, silhouette the elk's head and antlers above the sky, we know with the orange sky. Um, and you know, you might just need to get a little bit lower to make that possible versus having the whole animal behind the mountain uh, that's gonna keep it kind of dark. Uh, so if you can get it silhouetted with you know a nice orange sky or something, that can really make it pop. Um, so look for those little opportunities to make the photograph better. Uh, try and anticipate where the elk is moving to. So you'll notice these herds move in, in one direction and uh, look for the opportunities in the direction that they're moving and uh, see if there's a, you know, a potential for a really nice photo there. Go ahead and get move down there and get set up and wait for them to come into that scene 
that uh, has a really good potential. And often, you know, that's how a lot of my best photos happen is uh, anticipating and hoping that they're going to move into a particular scene and uh, being able to make that photograph after I've waited there for them to come right to me. So um, that's a, a really important tip to look for the best possible opportunity that you can, like, you know, almost in your head, like, ooh, what's the best thing that could happen right now? And look for that and then go set up and wait for that to happen. And it doesn't always happen, of course, but when it does, you're gonna get a really killer photo versus maybe some mediocre photos if you had just stayed back there and uh, continued to do your photography back there. Okay, last tip, when you're out here in the morning, you're gonna be out here during some really great light, uh, some really great time of the day for other wildlife to be active, um, lots of stuff going on. So try not to get too tunnel visioned on the elk out here because there's a lot going on when you're out here early in the morning in beautiful light, beautiful weather in the fall and the changing colors and the moose rut and bears on berries and all these things are happening all around you. So try not to get tunnel visioned on that elk and be open to whatever's being given to you, you know, at that moment. Like if you can't find elk, uh, but there's a beautiful moon set behind the Tetons, just switch, boom, I'm gonna photograph that moon set behind the Tetons and then get back to photographing elk. You know, uh, I'm sure you know what I mean, but just it's hard sometimes to get out of that tunnel vision, but uh, it's important because you're out here and there's beautiful stuff happening for sure. And uh, you don't want to miss it unless you're, you know, you're missing it for something better kind of a thing. So uh, anyway, with that, I've, I wanted this to be a really short video, but I just keep rambling and rambling and rambling. So the important points I think are get out here real early because there's a narrow gap of time both in the morning and in the evening um, when those elk are out in the meadows and it's usually you know within a half hour on either side of sunrise and sunset so get out here early stay out late um, shoot from your car use it as a blind try not to spook the elk there's an elk in the road right here That was a girl elk. I'm gonna try not to run any elk over. Um, but anyway, lost my train of thought again because that elk distracted me. Uh, but anyway, I like shooting from my car to uh, keep the elk comfortable with me. Um, go ahead and you know use your best equipment here. Shoot slow shutter speeds, high ISOs, whatever you need to do to actually be able to shoot. And uh, try not to worry too much about noise you'll have some good success out here. Low light photography is just difficult and requires, uh, you know, higher end gear, let's call it. But, um, or at least it doesn't require it, but it certainly makes it work better. That's part of the game. Um, other than that, come out and have a blast. Enjoy the Tetons and uh, check out that audiobook that audible link in my description and um, join me. I'm full for my workshops in September. Uh, I do have a few slots left still in October, so if you want to come out with me in October, uh, shoot me an email and uh, we can set that up. So have a great day. I'll see you on the next one. Hope you enjoyed these uh, pretty simple, quick tips on elk photography in the Tetons. See you later.